Hello everybody, I would like to continue my lumped power um, circuit propagation system with a further enhancement um, I would like to, to show. Um, I'm going back to my previous bifilar Tesla coil, my big one. For those of you not knowing what I'm talking about, please have a look at my videos where I show my new bipolar Tesla coil and also about details how um, the developed Tesla coils. I have many many documentations and literature on my website to study on the subject. So we start with the obvious. We start to continue to measure frequency and peak without, not connected to ground, not connected to anything and that's what we try to do and let's have a look how that looks like. The coil is now tuned to the best frequency 31.19 um, kilohertz under that condition it's the best value not connected to ground as you can see 100 milliampere that is under 16 volt that is about 1.6 watt. Now let's connect to my special ground and have a look at that. So that is optimal or optimum connectivity to the ground directly connected and this time I use a coax cable which goes directly to my negative ground and it's also grounded on the earth to a wire rod which goes six feet down the ground. Um, we have frequency now 31.19 it's um, the same it's only a slight change which needs to be adapted that's good however as you can see current is four times higher it draws up. However, as you can see now we have a very very clean signal here because all the ripple fields are are filtered out by the earth connectivity and from I went up from 2 kilo kilovolt 2.5 to up to 7.5 kilovolt. And that's quite a lot. However, now let's have a look if we can utilize this energy in a different way. We continue our uh, um, I want to show you a couple of different changes. So we do it for a test purpose here. We have the earth connected directly um, to the ground here, which goes then to a coax cable here on the floor. And then again in my capacitor. And now this is a new setup. I want to show you. I use two diodes. This is an industry standard and I will show you diodes which are on the market already available. So you have literally in an element you have two diodes going in opposite directions one connectivity in and two connectivity out if you want however in my scenario I use both diodes going in and out into the same interface of my coil here you see the arrangement you see the capacitor this is a 2.1 kilovolt 0.85 um, microfarad and I have um, very easily available 100 nanosecond um, um, 20 kilovolt diodes here I'm using they are rated about 150 milliampere uh, so I connect here also my DMM and connect here also across and I will show it in the diagram across um, negative ground and positive I connect um, so oscilloscope probe um, just for the information on um, the first side to measure it's a dangerous part if you do so the reason being is not only because of the high voltage but because of the influence it has to your complete tuning of the system you have really make sure to isolate it either you measure with a coil in a distance actually the rest is the RF frequency and measure so the peak you can do that or you have to hear my example I use a 1 mega ohm um, resistor in between um, just to isolate it even further otherwise it influences your complete measurement and you get false readings you have to be very careful okay now let's have a look how that looks like now still the earth connected to uh, the lower side of the bipolar Tesla coil I went of course have to go down quite a lot with the voltage let's go down let's say we go down to 6 vo 6.4 volt 6.5 volt I have now my DMM activated here 
the DMM is activated for inset. So that is equivalent here. This one is connected directly now to my um, coil system. And this one is showing this one as well. As you can see now, 1.8, 1.9, close to 2 kilovolt. So you see now the waveform is also changing as well on the ground. So let's do that again. Let's go down. Wave is gone. And you see the voltage is slowly decreasing. That means the capacitor, as you know, it's a microwave capacitor. It doesn't hold the voltage. It's a runtime capacitor. And therefore, um, but it's good for me because I don't need to, to spark it down. It takes quite a long time still to get down. So it charges quite a bit. Now get up again. And it charges up quite fast as well. But however, we have here three, yeah, almost 3.5 watt put into the system. Okay, now let's move on to my next test. Now disconnect my earth ground, it goes directly on it. Maybe some of you noticed something. Maybe I haven't seen that correctly, but oh, have a look. I haven't connected the wire at the end side. So I have no return pass for this coil to anywhere. Let's see that detail. So this piece of wire is just there. It's not connected. So what I have done now, this coil has only one connection. And this one connection goes by these two diodes. That's about it. And now I remove the earth connection as well. That means there is no pass between this coil and the big um, bipolar Tesla coil. So that means we have also no earth ground now. Let's, do, let's see how that performs. Here I have a simple drawing of the previously explained. You see on the left hand side the bipolar Tesla coil as a lump circuit. You see open connections for both sides, for the bipolar Tesla coil on the grounding side and for the receiving side. This is a traditional one wire power transfer um, scenario, which I use here in that example, which does yield interesting results. Well, this is now increased to 16 volt and the blue line again is the one you have to watch. Um, let's have a look. So we have no ground connected now. We have also no connection to the opposite side of the coil. So we have a complete open coil connection. We have only one connectivity between the bipolar Tesla coil is via the two diodes to the top side of the coil. That's about it. I charge up close to 1000 volt, 945 volt here, it's a little bit higher here, but that is more accurate. And I consume 1.6 watt. Let's get down to that. Let's see. The blue line goes down, the voltage goes down until it reaches this level. So it takes quite some time before it's completely down. So the DMM shows a little bit more and this goes down. This one stays at that level. I probably have to adjust it and make it a little bit more sensitive. Okay. Let's do that again. It's fairly fast up, I would say. I can measure that exactly how fast it's actually charging. Let's get down again. Takes quite some time. Now, what's going to happen if we now add a second set of coil? Does it have any influence? Will the charge will be reduced 
what's gonna happen let's have a look so this is my second set of coil it's also a 20 centimeter long ferrite however I have multi-layer bifilar on top of it and as you can see as my primary as my secondary outgoing I have my 762 stranded monster um, cable here that's the same I'm using for my primary on my bipolar Tesla coil it goes in the same bridge rectifier arrangement with the same diodes and I use also let's have a look here, the same capacitor 2.1 kilovolt 0.85 microfarad so what I have now I have here on the connectivity So what I have now here on the connectivity you see I have now both coils connected only one side and the rest of the other side, this one not connected anywhere just open and the other one on the other side not connected anywhere so I have now two coils in parallel only on one side connected and both are charging a capacitor let's have a look how that performs please remember to pay attention the blue and the pink line how they work together both in an instant up there up to 900 volt 1000 volt in an I would say yeah I could measure it but I have 10 milliamp here more they can go down here if you want show them it's 110 milliamp 10 milliamp more but I have twice the amount 967, 973. Let me toggle that. 952 on one side charged and 973 on the pink side. 973 is the new coil I did show you, only about 20 volt more for a tremendous amount of more work, double, double um, layer bifilar and monster cable compared to the first coil which was only a single layer bifilar and only a, a, a single um, 18 gauge um, secondary coil which is much much cheaper and easier to produce and I'm sure other combinations will be very very useful but if you take that as an example for those of you who can imagine what's going to happen, add more and more coils and that is your solution and you will break your COP of one very easily. Thank you very much. Until the next time.